Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, a happy Thursday to you. Thursday morning, May the 19th, Craig Can, Mike Mooney, another uh, edition of Elevating You, Reaching Your Peak with brand new inspiring, we hope it's inspiring, career growth conversation. We do know this, it's casual. It's very <laughs> casual. I mean, I got my coffee. It's good to be back, Mike. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. It's good to see you again. I know we've we've been on the road a bunch mm -hmm. lately, and uh, finally I'm back in the home studio. I know you're back in yours. I like the casual nature. We need that. It just feels like things have been ramping up. I don't know about <laughs> you. I just feel like I'm I'm trying to find more time to whew, take a breath and you yeah, know be yeah. be, uh, be be present and and where I am. So it's it's good to be here with you this morning, buddy. Yeah, buddy. No question about it. Good to be back with all of you uh, that are out there today. And as always, um, I think you know this, we're looking to get your comments, your reactions, your thoughts, and you can do that right here on the Can Advisory Facebook page. Here's our topic today. And uh, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, trying to come up with something. We haven't really gone down this path yet. And I prepared a couple of things, Mike, um, that I'm going to put in front of you as well. I'm so surprised. I'm yeah. so surprised. The, yeah. the topic is adaption <laughs> and resilience navigating a career journey. And I think the, the point in all of that is that career path for each and every one of us is, is not necessarily a straight line. It's got a few right. bumps and a few, you know, different uh, pitfalls some successes, maybe some failures along the way. And so what I wanted to talk about, Mike, is this longstanding success. How, how yeah. do we actually achieve that? And how confident are we in what we're doing. So as I said, I'll put some things in front of you in just a bit, but I want to get your opening thoughts on this and to each and every one of you out there, um, your opportunity as well for live questions and comments. Info at canadvisory.com is the email. And uh, you can also share topics that you'd like us to discuss on the program, but also your comments are welcome right here on the Can Advisory Facebook page. So with that longstanding success, Mike, I'll let you kind of take it wherever you want here. But um, yeah. this was one of your cool topic ideas talking about adaption and resilience. So let it rip. Right, man. I, you know, when, when I look at that particular slide with longstanding success, I, I love that because to me, it conjures a couple of things in mind. First off, and I know we talked about this a while back in one of our other episodes, is really defining what is success for you. Mm -hmm. You know, and the idea is often how we we define success from the external of, of what we believe people think we should be doing to be successful, having the certain title, having the paycheck, having the accoutrement of the, the, the lifestyle that goes along with it, right? Is that success? So to me, that, that jumps out saying, okay, well, let's first figure out what does success look like? And, and you know, where I always come from, man, I come from the inside out and it's figuring out for us individually what does success look like? So that that was the the one part of it. The the other side were, were the first two words of long standing. Mm -hmm. Man, that that's a that's a great a great phrase. For me, I love it because it really it speaks to this idea of of staying in the game, staying in the mm -hmm. race, mm -hmm. being there. You know, not giving up. And 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 that really speaks to where we're going with the idea of a of a adoption or adaption and resilience, right? Um, of saying, you know, I'm going to stay in this. I know I'm going to get knocked down. I know I'm going to mm -hmm. stand up, right? I know I'm going to learn. I love what you're saying before, like the career journey often, you know, is is more like a path. I kind of think of that like spaghetti model for like hurricanes. Yeah. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. It can look that way, right? But it's the idea of longstanding success is identifying what does success mean for you, but man, staying in the game. Just getting in it the next day, you know? Some people get discouraged, frankly. Oh. Um, something happens to them in their career. Maybe they don't get the promotion they want. Yeah. Um, or at the end of the year, they have the review and and they get knocked down a peg maybe. Or you didn't achieve yeah. some goals. Um, mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, your confidence wavers a little bit. Oh, you know, man. Am I on the right path? Am I doing the right yeah. thing? Is this the right place for me to work? What do I want to do and achieve ultimately? And you start questioning yourself. And you kind of get you get away from the bigger goal, which is building, continuing to build your career, building your, frankly, your brand, your personal and professional yeah. brand, um, yeah. and finding out what your strengths are. And I, I'm going to say a few things about that as we move along today as well. And I think a mm -hmm. lot of uh, what happens to people is maybe they don't plan for it. Maybe they don't think ahead enough um, to 
to what might happen. And if yeah. it were to happen, how would you handle it? What would you do? Um, yeah. Staying ahead of the game, if you will. You talk about staying in the game. I would mm -hmm. say staying ahead of the game is is equally important. Yeah, you know, and and it, look, I, I would say it, it's tough. It's tough sometimes to like know where where that game is going, right? To stay mm -hmm. ahead of it. But what I I love what you're saying though is you're 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 really sharing this idea of being more proactive in your thinking in the 100%. what ifs. Yeah. The what ifs. Like, okay, look, I'm not sure. Like, I'm I'm reading the tea leaves here. And based on what I'm seeing with our business, our industry, our client base, uh, my team, you know, it, it could go one of two or three ways right now. So, so how would I, how would I handle path A, path B, path C? So if, if I'm picking up what you're throwing down, it's really about not sitting back passively and just saying, I'm doing my work, I'm doing my work, I'm doing what I can do. Mm -hmm. It's really saying, okay. I'm doing what I'm doing here. I'm competent in what I'm doing, but I'm also being mindful of the what ifs that are out there so I can be prepared. Yeah. 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 And, you know, so often we, we tend to say that things happen to us, <laughs> Yeah, right? right. This right. is what happened to me today. This is what right. happened. Well, what about what you did proactively to, yeah. to try to go in a different direction or to try to mm -hmm. stay where it is that you want to go? And so folks, we welcome your thoughts on this as well. Um, feel free to jump in. But that that's the the kind of overriding topic that I want to put out there is longstanding success, because I think mm -hmm. that's ultimately what each and every one of us is is aiming for. You know, sure. how do we stay, as you say, in the game, but how do we think forward? So I wanted to, to talk about the keys to resilience. And these are mm -hmm. just some things that I came up with. OK, folks, yeah. not yeah. necessarily things that Mike did, but what I felt like in, in putting this together today um, was this would give Mike and I a chance to jump off and, and talk about some of them, all right? So in being proactive, I think some of the keys to resilience are the following. Number one, can we learn new skills? And Mike, you can pick out one or two of these that you want to talk about. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, continuing to learn new skills is really important. So you might be really good at something, which goes down to number four here in a second, but what else can you learn? What other things can you develop um, that maybe you're not as good at because when push comes to shove down the, the stretch, you're going to need some other things. Number two, growing a diverse network. And by that, I mean spreading yourself out into some other industries perhaps, but also within your own industry. So people that you would not necessarily have reached out to in the past, kind of seeking mm -hmm. out new people to build that network. Why is that important? It's important because if something were to happen to you, um, where would you go? Who would you lean on for some conversation? Where might there be some opportunities to have another job um, that you would know somebody already and that you're connected to? Number mm -hmm. three is more engagement. And what I mean by that is, is that if you're talking about adaption within your own industry, within your own job, um, do you kind of sit back, you know, in your office cubicle and and you don't really do stuff. And then all of a sudden you're not getting the promotion. You're not getting the great review. You're not getting the next big project. Well, how often do you truly engage? Do you lean in with everybody? Even when it might be a little bit more uncomfortable than you would like. Um, do you engage with others there to get people saying, hey, Craig or Mike, they're really into this. Um, let's give them some more. So that was something that I put there as well. Mm -hmm. I think it can really help you within your current job. And lastly, is building on a superpower. And this is something that Mike and I actually, we did a joint webinar together not all that long ago. And that was yeah. the topic was uh, finding your superpower. So if yeah. we figure out what we're really good at, what we're really great at, how much can we use that, right? Can we spin off of that as, as kind of a center, if you will, and yeah. use that to kind of create new opportunities? So learning new skills, growing a diverse network, more engagement internally, and building on a superpower. Those are the things that came to my mind, Mike. Yeah, well, I, I, would, I love all of those. I mean, that, that's a solid, solid list. And I, I think when you, you look at, you know, building new skills and looking at those skills, I think another way to, to, to look at that would be through the lens of saying, well, 
what am I learning right now? What is this experience teaching me that might actually lead me to learning a new skill, you know, through what I'm going through? Mm -hmm. uh, again, through that, not, not that, that victim's lens of this is happening to me. Why is this happening to me? And it could be, this is happening for me. So why is it happening for me? Let me, let me figure that out. You know, the, the, um, the engagement part, I think is super, super, super important because, you know, a big part of resilience, in my opinion, uh, is your emotional state, right? Your, your ability to sort of recognize the emotions that resilience is bringing out of us, right? Or what that experience is, is pulling out of us. And I'm a big believer that emotions are uh, a signal of a feeling, which is fine. Feelings aren't right or wrong, good or bad. They just are. The challenge is that, that we tend to sit in that emotion for too long. It becomes yeah, a state of yeah, being, yeah. right? And that leads us to anxiousness, depression, all of those, like that, that deep, dark rabbit hole that we don't want to be going down. So when you talk about more engagement, I think that is super important to think about what can I do to move to action around this in this time, in this space when I need to be resilient, you know, I need to move, I need to connect with people. I need to still show that I'm in the game, right. And observe of what, what's happening around me. And uh, finally, like the superpower part, of course, you know, I, that was a great, that was a great webinar that we did a lot of fun, right. A lot yeah. of exploration around what our superpowers, how do we develop those, but truly the superpower, if you think about it, is is a is a combination of a, of a natural talent and a strength and how we continue to build on those so in times of of question of can i get through this what is happening i think it's really important for us to kind of like really take stock in where are my areas of strength where are my areas of talent how can i then rally those to help me build resilience in this moment right for myself yeah. or or if you're a leader for my team because leaders are facing this on a, on a different scale where they're trying to be more resilient for themselves, but they realize that there are people looking around that are saying, how are they handling it? Are they still mm. riding tall in the saddle? Yeah. Or are they under the desk in the fetal position with the brown bottle of liquor? I, I, I don't know, right? right. But, but there's, you know, there are a lot of different complex dynamics to it. But I think that the key also, Craig, and I'd be interested in your thoughts on this, is that those to me are, are, are skills, right? Are, are, are things that we can be checking off and going through what about what about the person right and you think about like um when i think about people that are resilient right that that are that we would call resilient because i you know I, I think i think most of us want to be mm -hmm. and we look at them and go well that person was really resilient and I, I always like to look in and say well what are some of those traits you know um mm. are, are they are they optimistic right? They're just generally optimistic that something good is going to come from this, right? Or are they motivated that like, okay, look, I'm going to, I'm going to work through this. I'm going to, I'm going to learn those skills, right? But are they also maybe, are they, just, are they realistic too, to understand, you know, what are the things that I can control? What are the things that I can mm -hmm. control? What are the things that, you know, can be different or where, where do I fit in this? I, I think like to me, those three motivation, mm. optimism, realism combined with those skills, I think can really help round out that idea of how can we be more resilient or step into resilience. Yeah, I'll throw one more out there and, and that's being a self-starter. Um, I yeah. can't tell you how many times I've, I've been around people um, who wait for a project to be handed to them or they say, what's what's the next task, boss? Or yep. um, you hear them say, uh, you know, I'm, I'm overworked. I've got all these different projects. OK, well, how about one that you have passion for where you actually come to the table and say, hey, I would really like to do this or can I take on this? Um, yeah. That puts something in the minds of other people that you work with, bosses, leaders that says, yeah. Ooh, wow, this person's a go-getter. This person is, yeah. is actually ready to go and, and is, is thinking about idea and thinking about creation and um, trying to take us to the next level. And I think mm -hmm. that that's really important too. You want to stay ahead of the curve. And, um, you know, I, I talk about this a lot. Don't follow the curve, set the mm -hmm. curve, be the person that actually, you know, does something that, that somebody might not expect and show yourself for something different than perhaps they saw you as uh, in the past. And I think in this world of um, kind of maybe uncertainty about where our jobs are going or where the market is going or uh, yeah. all of that sort of stuff, that people that have been laid off over the last couple of years due to COVID or something that's happened to them, um, you have to stay strong about yourself but you have yeah. to really put some things out there that will get people to take notice of you, not wait to be noticed. And I think that that's right. important as well. Um, yeah. You know, a couple of things just, you know, 
transparency about things that have happened to me. And I'm curious about maybe something that's happened to you. I know that, yeah. you know, I spent 18 years at the golf channel and um, I did a lot of different things. And for a while, I didn't love that. I wanted to be known for one thing. And then I, hmm. I was able to ultimately embrace the idea that, you know what, I had the ability to host this, 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 and this. And maybe I wasn't in charge of just one thing, or I didn't host just one show that I was known for. And so I kind of embraced that at the end. And then lo and behold, I, I did end up hosting one big thing. Um, and then maybe a couple of others. And I, I really enjoyed that. So there was an adaption there. There was another adaption when um, there was a, a corporate change and some people were shifted from full-time to independent contractor status and had to adapt. And I was one of those people and yeah. it was a completely different role for me, but it gave me some, you know, as I sat back and thought about it, I was like, wow, I've got this freedom. And ultimately what I did was I started creating, you know, the second act, if you will, before I needed it, which was, you know, building a consulting branch uh, for myself one day a week. And, um, and I was able to do that. So, that was adapting to what was going on around me and helped me yeah. with resilience. Um, ultimately, I end up with this opportunity and, and you know, so grateful for to be able to be a chief communications officer of a professional sports league, which gave me the opportunity to, to the point I made earlier, add a new skill or learn mm -hmm. something or stretch myself into an uncomfortable position where I had a new role, completely different, similar, but different that allowed me perhaps to be able to have that long standing career or longevity. Yeah. And so yeah. I think um, you kind of create some of these for yourself. And I think it's important to not get down, as you say, um, you know, hunker down in a, in a little corner going, oh, my gosh, what about what about me? And and actually take control of your career, take control of your of your life and um, and try to move forward. It doesn't mean you're you're dis guarding something it just mm -hmm. means you're evolving a little bit more and taking on something else don't yeah. don't give up what you've got don't necessarily work less hard or or do anything like that but find something else that you can add to your uh to your resume if you will yeah yeah it's it's funny i i was thinking back to uh a really early time in my career <clears throat> when um i was doing public relations for for um uh, a Bush series team, now Xfinity series team, that's what it would be under the current sponsorships. But um, I was an account manager. I wasn't a director. Uh, and I, it was my first account. We were getting ready for Daytona. It was literally like a month and a half out. And, you know, at, in those days, man, we were handling everything from uniform designs to <laughs> um, press kits, writing the press kits, uh, handling uh, banners and decals. And I mean, it was, it was probably like 80 things that we were responsible for with the brand photo shoots and all these things. And my account director about a month and a half out as we're getting this stuff together, took me aside and said, Hey, I just want to let you know I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. I got another job at another team and uh, you know, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. And I'm literally like, are, are you kidding me? I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm literally following your lead. He's like, man, no, you've got this. I've watched it. Don't worry about it. Well, he goes in, he resigns. And I'm expecting that the manager leadership of the agency, we're going to say, hey, Mike, don't worry about it. We've got another person. We're going to slot right in there and uh, you'll be good to go. But instead they said, hey, listen, we're a month and a half out from the big race. Everybody's stretched. We think you got this. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, you know, and I literally had to, I think in that moment, both adapt and be resilient, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of the role of what I was now supposed to do based on what was around me. But I remember that it didn't just leave me out there to, to you know, to flail. I mean, I, I did have a, a vice president come in and check in with me and help me kind of prioritize my time and help me focus on the things I had to get done, help me breathe, you know, when I was uh, hyperventilating. Uh, but, you know, it was that time, though, I think was so important because it showed me early on that, hey, you know what, um, I can handle this. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. I have resources if I if I know how to ask for it. But you know what, I can I can do this. I didn't think I could. Right. Right. I didn't think I had it in me. But the situation pulled that out of me. You know, I believe and I also believe it helped that. Yeah, I looked at it through the lens of I don't have a choice but to do this. Like I have mm -hmm. I have no other choice, but I'm going to go and do this. It wasn't. 
Think of salespeople, and, and oh. they have to adapt each and every day. I mean, every you know, day. I'm selling this, but maybe they don't want exactly that, and so you've got to adapt. I mean, it's happened to me here over the last couple of days. I thought I had this one big workshop that we had planned for a, a bunch of executive leaders, and then he said, you know what, I, I want to change this a little bit here. Um, I want to take your book, which, which we really like, and I've read the whole thing, and I'm actually going to assign a chapter of your book to each and every executive that we have, and I want them to learn to present that. I'm going to have them present a chapter. And I was like, wow, first off, that's humbling and flattering. Um, nobody's ever said they were going to use my book as a project like that. Yeah. And I said, he said, and then when we get done, um, then I think I want to do the workshop. I said, well, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to give it to you in a little bit of a different form. I think the best thing you could do is go ahead and do the exercise you're doing. But you want to know what? Halfway through do the workshop because people are going to learn different new ways of how to present, how to own a room, how to do all this. And then when they do the second half of the book, they'll be, he goes, I, I, I like that. Idea. I love it. I think you have to actually think of new ways and, and always keep the other people in mind. It's not just about what you're de doing, what you're selling, all that sort mm -hmm. of stuff. So mm -hmm. we have to constantly adapt. That's just one example for me, but yeah. you know, resiliency and staying with it, you know, I'm, I still want to be able to do this for the organization. They want to do it as well. Yeah. Folks, questions and comments, always welcome right here on the Can Advisory Facebook page. We get a lot of comments from the people who are in our community each and every time. Mm -hmm. and, and we hope you'll bring some other people to the table. Um, Mike and I have gotten a little bit busier, and so we're not always here on Thursdays for whatever reason. Those are big days for us to be out on the road and all of that. So, uh, you know, it's been it's been fun here over the last couple of weeks. Mike, I want to put something else out there because okay. I think you're a big thought leader guy. You you tend to think about these things in these in these terms as much as I do. But mm -hmm. here's what I want everybody out there to kind of think about, and um, and it is thought provoking and thought wins in my book. So here are some questions you can ask yourself um, for advancement in your career. Um, it starts really deep down with a, who am I? You know, what do I stand for? Uh, what am I trying to accomplish? What, what are my strengths? What are my, you know, what are my things that I, I can do? And um, what am I great at goes back to the superpower. Again, these are things, if you're looking to be resilient and, and still adapt to things that are changing around you, that you need to think, where can I improve in my career? What things can I get better at that will help me in the goal of being a longstanding star, if you will, within mm -hmm. my industry? This is important. Who can I help? Because if you help others, if you think about not just what you do for yourself, but who you can, you know, give benefit to, that creates word of mouth marketing for yourself. Oh, um, that's, that's, what, uh, that goes back to Zig Ziglar's great quote. You can have everything in the world or everything you ever wanted if you help others get what they want. There you yeah. go. There you yeah. go. Definitely so. Being, being a connector for others. What else can I do besides the things that I'm so often used to. And I put journals and notes there. That's not a thought provoking thing. But what that is, is your opportunity to to write down these answers. And if you are in any of my workshops, Mike, I think you probably do the same thing. I've got a workbook that people go through. Mm -hmm. Same thing with my webinar program where people actually have to write down some things. And I think being thought provoking is very important. Um, getting yourself into this idea that, hey, I, I've got to take ownership of this. I can't just let things happen to me. I've got to stay ahead of it. And I've got to start looking at myself a little differently. Your thoughts? Yeah, well, I mean, re reflection is a huge part of growth, isn't it? Because we often just continue to go on the hamster wheel of go, go, go. And we have a chance to sit down and really think about something, right? Reflect on it, write it out. There's power mm -hmm. in, in writing uh, the word so that we can see it. Because I don't know about you, but I'll, I'll, I have you know, notebooks all around me here where I'll be writing notes in there and I'll reflect back on them or that note sparks another thought that sparks another thought. So, I mean, it's a continuous process of, of growth and improvement just of ourselves in general. So mm -hmm. I, I think, I think it's, it's, it's a powerful tool if we make the time to do it. Yeah, no question. You know? So to each and every one of you out there, I don't know what kind of comments we're getting this morning, but I think it's important to spend a little time. Uh, yeah. You don't have to spend a lot, but if you block off an hour a week, you know, just one hour a week and you kind of start thinking about what have I done? What have I accomplished? What do I want to accomplish? You know, I hear that all the time um, and, and I've read it in so many books. It's not like some new thing, but, you know, on Sunday night, setting a look ahead at what you're going to try to accomplish. If, if mm -hmm. Friday comes and you can accomplish one big thing, what is it this week? 
if you can accomplish a few little things that you can get that are, you know, a steady project and what you can do to advance it, um, what, what can you do with that? And yeah. sometimes, so often we make a, a to-do list. I'm guilty of this. And I just check off those lists and I forget the big picture. What is the biggest thing that's going to make me happy that I'm going to be able to talk about and share? I think that's yeah. important. So well, journaling it, and notes. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny you say that because this morning before we, we got on the show, I, I had a list of things that I wanted to get knocked out. I started at about seven this morning <laughs> and I found myself gravitating towards just knocking out the the emails that I had to do while I had some big rocks up there that I had been pushing off a little bit. And I was like, mm -hmm. you know what? The emails can wait. Let me knock out these two things before we hop on the show and go. And I'll tell you what, I, I just felt so much better knowing that I actually moved the bigger pieces along and that, I, look, I can knock the emails out in no time. But I think, you know, yeah. oftentimes we'll fall to that easy, oh, I'll knock this out. I was busy. I was getting things done, you know? But what can you do to really move move it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, love it. 30 minutes, power. There we go. Power there web. We go. That's what we do. <laughs> and um, it's time for a, uh, a couple of final thoughts from each of us. Hopefully, we've put some things in front of you that, uh, that can help you out. Mike, I'll, I'll let you, uh, in honor of, of Jim Nance uh, and hello, friends, it's time for a goodbye, friends. <laughs> and is. I'll let you go first. Cool, man. Well, you know what I love about... The, the, the show here in the community that, that's been growing around, elevating you, Craig, over the past year and a half, maybe two years, goodness yeah. gracious, um, is that really the message and the conversations that we're trying to inspire and cultivate are around this idea of how do we get to another level? How do we as individuals, because we, we're individual contributors, but as leaders, how do we then bring people to a better, different place? Mm -hmm. So as I'm thinking about today's conversation around, you know, uh, adapting and resilience, uh, I'm, I'm going to pull back, you know, my, my cards, man. You know, I, I've got my note cards here uh, on my desk. I'm big on the visual anchors, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's those four words that that I lean into every day that I think, again, people can really think about yeah. is intentional action drives clarity. You know, so as you're thinking about whether you're adapting right now, whether it's about being re more resilient, if you can be intentional in your actions, it's going to help drive the clarity that you're seeking. But it's going to take you taking that first step, walking into this little bit of the unknown, the, the uncomfortable place that maybe you don't feel you're prepared for. So I would encourage you to know that you are enough, you have enough, but just take that intentional step. That's what it's going to take. Very good. Very good. I love the intentional. Um, and you've actually helped me a, a little bit with that as well. I always like my final thoughts to be about something that's topical, something that's going on. And, you and sometimes bring it back I, to the sports world. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. I love it. So love this it. week, um, and if you look over my shoulder, you'll see a couple of flags there from major championships that I've attended. Mm -hmm. And I've got so many more. There's a couple in front of me and, and, and now, a bunch now, that aren't even... Now, yeah. do you do you buy those at the gift shop, or do you actually do you steal them when no one's looking on the court? How does that work? <laughs> no, I've actually made the purchase, and then the signatures come after that. So, right. uh, and and one of those that's over there from the PGA uh, back in 2018, Brooks Kepka's signature. Um, mm. That one I actually bought at a charity event. Can't believe nice. I did it, but I actually spent money, big money, to uh, to put toward a worthy cause. for so, for anyway. a good cause. I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. All right. So here's what I'm doing. I'm tying it into this week's PGA Championship. And whether mm -hmm. you like golf or not, I think you all know who Tiger Woods is. All right. And um, and he's playing with Rory McIlroy and Jordan Spieth this week. Now, Rory McIlroy is um, still looking for the Masters to complete the career Grand Slam. He needs to win all four majors. Jordan Spieth needs the PGA Championship to complete the career Grand Slam. Tiger Woods already has the career <laughs> Grand Slam. He's won all four majors in his career. My point in sharing this is that um, this week is a different course, all right? And, mm. you know, some things might happen for them that go well in round one, um, but they've got to stay resilient to the process to try to get there on Sunday and have a chance to win. Tiger Woods has been through a lot, obviously, some of it's self-induced and other things that have happened, car accidents and the like. The fact that he's even playing shows that he's, been yeah. resilient to the process and trying to stay out there. But he's also had to adapt to a new body, right? His right leg is not what it once was, but he's still out there competing. The other guys as well are trying to find a way to adapt to a major perhaps that they haven't won or a part of their game that they need to improve. Always trying to stay in the mix and be resilient because there's so many great talented players. 
But this week, they've got a golf course that they don't play each and every week. And that course is going to have different, you know, little stumbling blocks and some issues. And you're going to have to stay resilient. So how do I tie this into your career? Folks, Hmm. it's really no different. You might not have won your career Grand Slam yet. Maybe you haven't achieved everything that you're trying to achieve. But to try to get there, you've got to continue to improve your game right? You've got to find a way to adapt in a marketplace and in an industry that changes and you have to continue to build a network of support. And that's what players in the PGA Championship have this week. They're they're fighting the same thing. It's just a different industry, if you will, a different career. So take your career, what you do for a living and think, how can I get better? How can I adapt to what's going on around me? If something goes wrong and I make a double bogey in my career, How do I come back and make a birdie quickly? What can I do? And that means constantly looking at yourself, taking notes and trying to improve. So there's my final thoughts uh, for the day. hundred percent. I love it. I love it, man. It's a great, your analogies are spot on, brother. I love it. Well, I try to bring a- Bogies and birdies and eagles and- Maybe next okay. week I'll go, uh, or next time we get together, I'll go NHL playoffs, you know, oh, and um, we can talk about that a little bit. <laughs> Hat tricks hey, and always great to be with you, man. Uh, yeah, we'll do it. it again soon. To everybody out there, we welcome your thoughts. We welcome your ideas. And it is uh, it is always fun to bring Elevating You to you all here on the Can Advisory Group Facebook page. Um, he's Mike Mooney amazing at what he does with his workshops, his webinars. We actually got to do one together a couple of weeks ago. That's pretty was, cool. And looking to fantastic. do more of that. Yep. Um, I'm Craig Can. Hope you enjoy this thing, man. It's supposed to be just fun, relaxing, and toss some ideas out that can help you move into Friday. Have a great Thursday and a great week next week. To all of you, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, everyone.